I just thought that I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna meet other people uh, that are dope. I'm gonna meet like you know phenomenal people, diverse, I'm, and I'm gonna meet my husband there. And I'm, I'm just gonna have a boyfriend who's like studying something business-wise. Then I'm gonna be a doctor, and then we're just gonna be boyfriend and girlfriend. And it's just gonna be like some black excellence going on. And then you know we're gonna get married later on. And yeah. Plot twist, that's not what happened. Oh my gosh, I thought I was about to, yeah, I thought I was about to fail out. I'll just say, it. I really did, I really did. And it was a, a while where I changed. your girl for me Lyo welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in make sure to like this video because it helps other people to see the video and make sure to subscribe because we have awesome content on this channel today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about my experience going to a top 10 university John the Johns Hopkins University to be exact so without any further ado I guess let me just get into it um <laughs> so I'll give you guys like my brief history of my background so like i had graduated from a very small school oh my goodness y'all so small school um and i uh was top of my class like i did really well in college and not in college but i did really well in <laughs> in high school and i was graduating and i originally i wanted to go to harvard right but um it didn't work out you feel me <laughs> It didn't work out, but I ended up at a really good school too. I saw that I got into the Johns Hopkins University and I went to like their, I think it's for minority students, um, their weekend when you're in high school, see your senior year, you get to go there, go to Hopkins and kind of explore and get kind of, get a better feel of the culture and you're with other kids or not, not kids, but you're with other people your age and y'all are all scoping it out to decide whether you want to choose it or not. And so I did that and it was lit. Like I had such a good time, you guys. Like you understand, I had such a good time. Like I came back to school just geek. Like I was like, oh my goodness. Like I had so much fun. I was telling my friend about it. I was like, listen, like it was lit. Like it was just, ah. They made that, that weekend or whatever, they made it so much fun for us like at least for me like I was new to this you know so it was just like a whole nother world I was like oh, wow I was like oh this is great but it was just like seeing other people who look like me I went to a predominantly white school and you know <laughs> It just, it was great because it was something that's very important to me going to college is that I want, I want to see other people who look like me. I love diversity and I love other people's cultures. You know, I love that, but I'm, I'm so tired of being other. Like I would want other people to be like me. Like I, I want to see other people who look like me. I really want that representation and I want to be amongst my peers um, that are, that look like me. I, it, it was very important to me. I wanted to have diversity, that component like it was huge to me but i also wanted that that diversity to include a lot of people who look like me in terms of black people period okay so so yes um but i also wanted to go to like i really was one of those people where i really want to go to a top institution i really wanted to go to harvard that was like ever since i was little that was my goal you know <laughs> maybe maybe there's grad school i don't know who knows but um uh. Uh, but <laughs> but yes, uh, I, I went there. I ended up choosing to go there for school. The other schools, they were good too, but I felt like with me, I, originally I wanted to study medicine. Like originally I wanted to be a doctor. So that was, it just made the most sense because that was that school that was known for like doctors and research and everything like that. And when I went there, oh my goodness, you guys, like I was like, ah, I was, I was so, Y'all don't understand. I was so ready to go to, I was so ready to go to college. Like if you, you need to watch my video of like my letter for myself, letter to my, I'm reading a letter to myself from before I started college. I don't know. I'll link it. Maybe I'll link it somewhere here, but 
I was so excited. I was turned, like I was ready to go. I was ready to get out of my house and I was ready to live on my own. I was ready to make friends. I was ready to live that life, right? Okay. Uh, and you know, I just thought that I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna meet other people uh, that are dope. I'm gonna meet like, you know, phenomenal people, diverse. I'm, I'm gonna be able to, um, <laughs> I'm gonna be able to, you know, I'm just, I'm gonna be able to find my, not find my husband, but I'm gonna, but yeah, basically, I, I really thought, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna meet my husband there and I'm, I'm just gonna have a boyfriend who's like studying something business-wise, then I'm gonna be a doctor and then we're just gonna be boyfriend and girlfriend and it's just gonna be like some black excellence going on and then, you know, we're gonna get married later on and yeah. Plot twist, that's not what happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's not at all what happened for me. Um, but I did meet a lot of diverse people, dope people and people who look like me, so that was lit. But I first came in just very friendly, which is me, that's just the type of person I am. Like, I be having my moves, y'all, I'll be completely honest, but I'm very friendly, like, hey! I was just like, this is what I would tell people, this was my whole spiel, y'all. I literally, I had a whole spiel. And it's just, it's very much me, very much the type of person I am. Well, look at my content, you'll see that. I, I low key, I'm still the same, but I've changed. I have changed, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but I was like, like, hey, my name is Fumi Lyo. You can call me Fumi or you can call me Lyo. You know, I just, <laughs> I would give that little spiel because I kind of wanted to like reinvent myself a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to reinvent myself a little bit in college. So I wanted to give people options. And I'm not gonna lie, I really like nicknames, but what I know now that I, you know, I work, you know, in what do you call it, business or corporate? I don't know, whatever you would call it. But no, people are calling me Fumi Lyo now. I don't I don't do nicknames in business like when it's professional professional world. I don't do nicknames now. Cause I something had happened actually in college that made me realize, yeah, you gotta stop telling people that they can call you whatever. Cause I stopped even doing that Fumi or Lyo and I stopped just be like, make up a nip game. I love nicknames. You know, cause people folks started to get creative. You feel me? Like <laughs> it wasn't nobody close to me or it wasn't even a student, but it was like it was just, it was very random and the person meant no harm. It was, it wasn't like a random class. It was a random extracurricular class. It wasn't even like a professor or anything like that. It was like, um, I don't know, just something for fun that they offered to students. And then I just told the lady, I, I was like, oh yeah, you can call me anything. And then the name that she called me, I said, Jesus. You know what I mean? I said, <laughs> I said, my ancestors and my forefathers would be disappointed in me. I gotta stop. I gotta stop all this nickname stuff. <laughs> I gotta stick to that Fumi or Lyo or, you know, it is, you know, it's a wrap. But if it if it's another nickname that I like, it's cool. Um, but yeah, that nickname was wild. I can't even remember what she said to this day, but I, it was that day I made the decision. I said, no, 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 no. It stops today. And then when I got to nicknames were it, nicknames were still encouraged from people I really knew, but for I would mostly say, but as a rule of thumb, it's just Fumi or Lyle, just stick to that. You know, I'm not answering any other name, you feel me? Like, <laughs> come on. Um, but when I got my first job out of college, like my first real, you know, real corporate job or whatever, like what'd you call it, corporate? I guess so, yeah, my first real job. Um, I told them, yeah, no, they were like, oh, what's your, your name is Fumi Lyle, yeah. And I was like, oh, is there any other, they asked me, is there any other name that we can call you? You have a nickname? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's really that simple. Um, because I noticed like, there were other people who were in higher positions that people call them their full names. Granted, it was due to the position though. Like if I, if I was to tell you the position, then you'd be like, okay, that makes sense. But then I said, nah, we gotta manifest this. I, I'm gonna get there, not to those people's position because I don't think that's what I wanna be, but my name also should be said in full, right? And I was thinking about, what about the other Fumi Lyo that are in, in Nigeria where I'm from? Like that was where I was, um, Obviously, I'm Nigerian or whatever, and so there, Fumi Lyo is a common name. Like this, it's not, it's not a big deal. But I, so I was like, for other Fumi Lyos that they're gonna cross paths with, like for their sake, <laughs> for their sake alone, these people will know how to say my name, so that for the future person that they see that has my name, you know, at least they will, you know, give that and actually try to say the person's name. Because so many times when I tell people my name, the first thing they say is, "You have a nickname." No, bruh, no I don't, I don't know you. Like, you know, and people, not everybody, 
people don't mean any harm, but in profession, I'm just talking about like in professional settings, right? Um, in professional settings, no, it's there is no nickname. If it's not professional setting, oh yeah, call me for me, call me live. And, you know, it's cool, it's cool. I'm just talking about professional settings. All right, I digress though. But yes, you guys, I would give them the spiel or whatever. And I just had, I was like going out. <laughs> I was just, I was making friends. So I was a part of a pre-orientation program for, with the Office of Multicultural Affairs. And it, it's dope if you, I don't know who's watching this, but if you're like an upcoming person, if they have a pre-orientation, pre-O, um, whatever camp or whatever, go there. Cause it also allows you to move in early and it's a great way to make friends. Though I was like texting and on Facebook, like I, I created a, <laughs> I was like, I created a Facebook literally when I graduated um, high school. Like my mom did it, like the way I was brought up, I wasn't allowed to have like all this type of stuff. And so, yeah, like I was talking to people then. So I kind of knew, I didn't know them, but I knew people going into college. And so, and I was also part of that pre-O camp. And so it helped you make friends and you're you're coming in a little bit more comfortable which is very important considering like my school was really small so it was a transition for me it was a, it was a transition it would have been an even bigger transition if i went to like a big state school like a maybe like a uc something or whatever but um yeah no like it was, a, it was still a transition, but it was helpful because like I was able to familiarize myself and I was intentional about getting to know uh, people and getting to know people's names. Like, hey, how are you? Like, I would just be asking, y'all, I'm wild for real, but this is so me. I really, I really do be friendly, sometimes a little too friendly, but this was me in the past now. Um, you know, I, I still do have my moments, y'all. But yes, like, I would just be up to random people. I'd be like, hey, how are you? Hey, my name is da 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 how, what, What's your name? Da -da -da. <laughs> be just very innocent. Like, just, you know, good intentions, good intentions. So I just try to like make as friends with people, try to know as many people around me as possible because it's also, I realize now looking back on it, it's also a comfortability thing because I'm so, I was so far from home wanting to know what was around me. So it seemed a little bit more familiar and I could get better acclimated versus like if you're somewhere and everything seems like foreign to you and unknown, it's easier to feel like balled up and just like uh, like uncomfortable and homesick. So I, I think now I realize that was part of the reason, maybe, I don't know, but it's just me looking back on it. But I think I was just trying to get more comfortable. Um, yeah, and, and that's just me. I, I, I am a friendly person, I'm not gonna lie. I, again, I have my moments, but I am a friendly person. But yeah, and then I remember we would be, <laughs> y'all, like we would be going to, um, in the beginning, like going to parties, I'll be on the phone with my mom, I'll be like, <laughs> She'd be like, you're going out again? You, Cause it would be Saturday and Friday night I just went out. She's like, you're going out again? And I was like, yeah, mommy, I'm going out. Da, da, da. <laughs> like, there was no shame in my game. I was just very open about it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to another party. Yeah, it was very open. Like I just, I was very chill with my mom. And at that time, like I didn't drink or nothing like that. I didn't drink until, you know, I was 21, honestly. I. Didn't. That's a whole other story in itself, but yeah. Um, and so I, but I just, I love to dance and I love to be around people and just have, and the talks, like we had the best discussions, the best discussions in college, like after the nights out, like we would all group together. Like I'm talking about freshman year now, we all group together and start like talking about life, talking about different things. Like I remember there was this one random night, like this random guy put me, <laughs> Put me and these girls I was with, they, he he put us on a game about like he was about like how guys be looking at girls. He was like, he told he was like, listen, let me tell you. He was like, don't ever feel like you know if you're in a room that uh, you know like a dude he don't see you. Like let me tell you, us as men, like when we in a room, we scope out the room, like we see everybody there. So if that if that dude if he don't approach you or if he don't da 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 like he not da da, you know what I mean? Like they were just it was just oh my gosh, I had so many experiences. I would tell you oh I have whew, I had so many experiences, like so many random moments, like obviously some stuff that. I, you know, it's on cameras, I can't even say like, it's just, oh my gosh, yeah, it was something, it was something. But that being said, like after a while, I wasn't even going out like two day, two nights a week on the week weekends, again, and that was me. I didn't go out on the weekdays. I think I only ever did that maybe like two times, maybe three in my whole college experience. I didn't really do that. 
I didn't really do that. And after a while, it just kind of it got a little bit old to me for it to go out like twice in a weekend. Um, so yeah, in terms of like school related stuff, I'm, I'm taking you guys step by step. Freshman year, it was kind of like, y'all, <laughs> it was a struggle. It was a struggle. Like, oh my gosh, I thought I was about to, yeah, I thought I was about to fail out. I'll just say, I really did. I really did. And it was a, a while where I changed. Like I really changed from being like super friendly and very much myself to like this darker version in terms of, darker in the sense of, I was just quiet and to myself, like just very much to myself. I remember, I remember folks thought I was um, depressed, some one person in particular thought I was depressed or whatever. And I, t I honestly, I don't know, I don't know. I was very down, I was very down. That was probably one of the lowest points of my life because it was like, how you go from being the top of your class where you're from to coming to college and now it looks like you might have to make a U-turn. And I and I have a video about that on my channel. It's a little bit of a rough video. I might redo it, but I'll link it probably. Maybe, I don't know. But um, yeah, y'all. So it was, it was a struggle. I was like, and the thing about it was just because I didn't have good study skills. So if you're thinking about, you know, coming to Hopkins, Hopkins is notorious for being hard. Literally, like people know, at least I don't know what it is right now, but I'm a fairly recent grad. And when I was there and verse, and even when I was like going in, like it's known for being a tough school. It's known for that. And um, yeah, bruh, it did not disappoint. But part of me wonders whether it was really hard or everybody just talked about it as being hard. You know what I mean? Like I know like some people would sometimes stay away from certain people in, in like classes that they were in just because they don't even they didn't even want that rhetoric in their mind um but yeah like it it was a lot of people like <laughs> talking about you know struggle about how hard things were but i do know our classes were hard because i remember there was this one class the average was it wasn't even under 50 it was under 40 i believe it was under 40 maybe it was like i don't know whether it was like Either it was like 40 something, 30 something, or 20 something in the class. What, so, you know what I mean? Like, but the thing is with classes like that, like obviously there's a curve, you know, the, your grades are curved. So that's something to keep in mind. But fundamentally, I did not have good study skills at all in the beginning. I did not have good study skills at all. I was embarrassed and ashamed, and I was, you know, I was at my end point, but there are so many great resources, let me tell you, in that school to help you succeed. So if you put your mind to it and you decide that, hey, I'm gonna pass, and you do everything in your power to utilize those resources, please, 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 y'all. Looking back on it, and even when I was able to get through that hump, um, oh, truthfully, the whole four years was was quite a hump. You feel me? Like it was it wasn't easy. I won't say that my college experience was not easy for me. You know, people maybe some people might say like, oh, college was easy for me. I can't relate. I struggled. <laughs> I struggled, but I wouldn't change that. Even though it, it did break me. I'm not gonna lie. It did break me at one point in that beginning, that freshman year. Um, like I was, y'all. It was it was. Oh my goodness, like. It was something you would have to you have to watch that um, that video I was talking about uh, unless I remake it. But yeah, you guys. So it, there are resources there. Talk to your teachers. Talk to your professors. Go to the help rooms. Let them see you. Let them know you're struggling. Tell as, as many people as can help you. Let them know. Let them know, and they will really help you. They will really help you. And stay strong in prayer. Stay prayed up. Have a good support system. If you don't have a good support system, like look online, hit me up, shoot. Like, because I went through it, I, I am like, I do have that heart where if you're, if you were to go through something and um, you need any like words of encouragement, if you just comment down below. And I know even some of y'all have been like hitting me up on IG talking about stuff. Like I will, I reply and you know, people can vouch. So literally don't give up hope but that's the thing yo you have to know that don't give up hope and you got to know also because my thing was like bro is it just me is anybody else struggle around here because i was looking around and like you know i was very happy that the other like you know people that i knew that i was friends with they were doing well they were doing pretty well which is awesome it's a beautiful thing but um i was struggling i was struggling although like some people had like one or two classes but but in the beginning like when i first got there that first semester 
it was every class, almost every class, <laughs> where I was just like, ah. And it also plays into like, you have to know how to construct your schedule. You really have to construct your schedule in a way that will promote your success because taking certain classes all together could make or break you or you know your GPA and stuff like that. Like it could be, it could be very, uh, very hard for you. You know, it can make things harder than they have to be. So talk to upperclassmen. At at this point, like this is, you know, obviously for people who don't know, like it's ideas that you can use when you get to college in any school you go to. For people who are here that go or are about to attend uh, Hopkins or are in Hopkins now, because I know me, I would just like right before college or even during college, I'm always looking up videos, I'm always. But talk to upperclassmen, a lot of people have been through stuff and a lot of people can put you on game. I will let you know that like, cause there was like a period where I was just like locked in and I wasn't even like going out in terms of, going out in general and even going to social studying spaces. Like we have, <laughs> there's this one room that we have that, you know, if you know, you know, like there's, <laughs> That's kind of annoying to say, but you know how every place has like certain places that black people can tend to con congregate. And so like when going to those places, like they people will put you on, people will say things there that will help you succeed. And I know that there were also many times where when it's a large group of us studying and you know, where we can all like work together, th things happen so much better. I will say one thing about college, one thing that college taught me is that you can, you can do it better when you're when you do it collectively you know reach out to others for help but also try to make sure you understand things yourself because that was one thing about me in the beginning is that i was just so prone to memorization i just I heavily relied on my memory because i didn't pay, i wasn't really paying attention in class they were like you know the classes are not even so big as to like a state yeah, as a, like a state school but still it's a big class where you can be on your laptop the whole time and not pay attention and if you not, don't pay attention like three or four days, bro, that junk is gonna catch up to you if you're not studying at home, you know? And I really, I took on too many extracurriculars in the beginning and it was just, it's just a mess. So make sure you prioritize your, um, <laughs> make sure you prioritize your school, uh, the actual education, the reason you're there, you feel me? Other than the extracurriculars, cause I'm a big extracurricular person. Like high school, I just did everything. And so I thought I could do everything in college. Tell me why. It makes no sense, but I learned the hard way, yeah. <laughs> but yes, you guys, I will say that my experience at that school was that one thing I will say is like the one of the best things is the resources, like the access to so many different things, the classes that you can take, like my classes, oh my gosh, so flipping dope, like some of the classes that I took. And I remember for certain classes, uh, well, later on, like in my upper, my upper years, like my junior senior years, when I'm really getting into my major and stuff like that, that's when I really started to love the classes more because more into my major, more of what I'm interested in. But like in the be like in the earlier stages, it was just kind of like, oh, you know, there are requirements, but I'm here and there. But there were some classes where I'm like, yo, this is dope, or oh wow, like if I had just sat down and really gotten on top of things earlier, I would have enjoyed this class more. And the interesting is the information is dope and I would have actually done better, you know, throughout this and not be like trying to pull up, <laughs> pull up some crazy grade as a, like in the final. But um, yeah, I will say like try and stay on top of your work. I feel like these are things that everybody says, but it's so important. It real time management is so important. Take that time to study, take that time to like just hone in and study like without any distractions. And that's something I struggle with like even to this day of doing one thing at a time is hard for me. It's hard for me, but you have to do it. And things are better. I see, I see how things are better when I just focus, you know? So, and in college, I saw how things were better when I just focus. So you gotta make it a habit. You feel me? It's to do that and do it early. Don't just do it last minute to pull off the grade. No, do it early. Um, so that that's what I would say. But yeah, like the resources are there. And the, other than the classes, like the research opportunities, like, so amazing research opportunities I did like I I was doing I was getting paid for this but I'm, I'm doing like research on macular degeneration you know in, in an amazing space I'm doing research on I, I what was it neurotoxicity or something about toxicity in the air like you know involving neuroscience like it was just dope like I had dope opportunities dope experiences uh some paid some unpaid 
Uh, you, you're around people who are making things shake in the world. Not just, you're not just around dope people in the nation, you're around dope people worldwide. So the people who would even come to speak to us, right? Not even the people who come to speak to us, the people who are teaching us, the people who are like just around in the vicinity and like different research opportunities, like certain things are like an email away. Obviously you have to facilitate things and you know, you know, you gotta do, you gotta do some work, but literally they, they give you so much. I will say that about my school. They give you so much. You just, it's just that time, the time management to utilize it. Cause sometimes I remember just thinking like, I think I even talked to somebody, talked to a friend or something about this. Like, man, there was like so many dope things that we had access to, but that time, creating the time to actually utilize it was, was proved to be hard at times proved to be hard a lot of times because it, it came to be a thing where you got to prioritize uh, certain things. So especially, and it, especially if you're in extracurricular groups that you're really passionate about, your schedule is just, uh, it, it's, it gets to be very iffy. But I guess if you're not in any extracurriculars and you were just trying to do research stuff, I think it would be easier or just trying to do other opportunities. I think it would be easier, but like when you have, an extracurricular activity or more than one, depending on the time, the de time demand of those activities and whether you hold a position on the executive board, you know, things will become more difficult, uh, to, more difficult or less difficult to like move things around in order to utilize some amazing resources. But like, yeah, when I even think about now, like the people I had access to that I didn't do anything with, you know, excuse me. Like obviously some, obviously some people, you know, I was able to like talk to a little bit more, but I, I will say that I could have done more. I could have done more. And if you're going, try and make your schedule so that you are, you are making choices. Whereas five years from now or 10 years from now, when you graduate or whatever, you'll be able to reflect and be like, okay, I made use of all the resources that I would, would have wanted to make use of at that school. And I, I can't, I can't say I made use of all of them, but then again, I don't think I had the time to because I was invested in other things in general, as well as um, extracurricular wise, and just with my my course load. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if I would have had the time to be honest. I'm not sure. And I really enjoyed the extracurricular I, extracurriculars I, that I was a part of. It was very important to me. Extracurriculars, I feel like it really helps shape your experience at school, honestly. And it's just, ah, oh, it's so great, it's so great. Especially at Hopkins, cause you know, you get the, you get some money, like they'll, they'll give you money for your extracurriculars. Um, not you personally, but the group in order to do certain things. So it's just, it's amazing, it's amazing. I will say that, I will say that my school was very tough. It was very tough, very tough. Many a times thought about like, man, should I transfer out, should I did da da But honestly, I, I am that, I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay because I'm that type of person where I don't I don't necessarily want things handed to me easy. Like I wanna work. I wanna be like, man, I got it out the mud. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I, <laughs> I'm trying to unlearn things that are unhealthy um, about me, but I am very much like, nah, I'm, I have to finish it. I started this, I'm gonna finish it. And then, <laughs> was like, are you sure? Are you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and I ended up doing it and, you know, doing it on time within four years, but it wasn't without the help of a lot of great people and resources around me. So like I said, you guys, but if you are thinking about like grad school or like medical school and things like that, yeah, really do pay attention to your grades though. Like I said, it's not for everybody. I did what I did, but think about your long-term goals and if you know you're not getting the results that you need for the future that you wanna have, go ahead and do what needs to be done. I'm not in any way trying to promote people to stay in situations that are not benefiting them. Um, just work every situation according to what your end goal is. Yeah. Guys, hear me, hear me, hear me. Utilize the resources they give you. Tell people if you're struggling. Speak on it. Be at every office hours. You gotta be in their face. They gotta see you working. It's not enough to just do the work. They gotta see you. You gotta be vocal. You gotta communicate frequently, as often as you can. Don't do too much now, you feel me? But you have to like, you have to make it known and you have to utilize the research. They, people need to see you're trying if you are 
um, struggling or whatever. But yeah, it was dope and I had some great classes and you know, and it made it better when I would get like good grades, like when I would make an A, it just made it all the, like it was like, Bro, I might as well won a, won a Grammy or something like that. Like, cause I just knew like, bro, I made it. Like I got this, you know, like, ah, you know, it's just very, it's more exciting. It means more when I know I, I worked very hard for something. That's what makes something for me. That's what makes something like special for me. It makes it worth it. Um, but you know, it's a lot of times where I would work very hard or I, at least I thought I was. Looking back sometimes, I realized I was just very distracted when I was studying, so I don't even know if you could call it, you know, what it was, so whether, I don't know if you call it, working so hard. Well, no, I did, I did, I did. I didn't work hard, but I could have worked smarter. I worked hard, but the whole thing is work smart, work smart. But um, there were some, a lot of times, a lot, a huge amount of times, where it was like, dang, this is not the grade I expected. How, God, you know, just just start crying and be like, God, again? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we we about to be like, I'm like how we, how we about to keep doing this every semester? Like, what's going on? Um, but no, God really came through for your girl. He, can, he will come through for you. And the good grades will make it so much more satisfying to have. Um, and just study smarter, study smarter. Because I noticed like those times that I would study smarter, it would reflect in my grades, but, um, and the time when I was studying harder, it was like, yeah, I was studying hard, but it's like, you know, what, uh, you know, <laughs> didn't pay off as much. Nah, not, not as much, it, not as much as when I studied smarter, um, and harder, or if you can do both, I don't know. But yes, you guys, like that was dope about the experience. And it, it's like just the day to day, like seeing people taking pictures around your school, Imagine that, like, it's mad tour, not mad tours, but it's a lot, it's a good amount of tourists that will come and just be taking pictures, like, around the school, and you would be, like, running late to class, trying to, you know, shift, but it wasn't, like, so many, but here and there, like, you'll see things like that, um, but yes, it is academically rigorous university, 100% an academically rigorous university. I wouldn't say if it's a school, you're just looking to coast. My major was pretty tough, it was pretty tough, yeah, and I was also pre-med at the time, so. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't that. But I don't know if other majors are easier, but I would just, I would keep that in mind. I wouldn't put my school as the first in mind if you're looking for, if you're thinking of a way, a school to just coast through, I wouldn't think Johns Hopkins. So I already know, like if you're going there, just be ready to put in the work. Um, but I do think that maybe sometimes it might be not as hard as, you know, we, a lot of, the time we were saying when we were in it. Cause I remember a lot of times people would be like, would look back on classes and be like, I should have passed that class or I should have got an A in that class. And there are a lot of classes that I think I'm like, yeah, I should have I got a like, I should have got a better grade in that class, you know? But it is what it is. Um, but I will say that, and I will say like, if you're thinking like, oh, like this is just gonna be a school full of squares, da da da. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's like phenomenal people, great looking people, like people who are lit, people who work hard, but they play hard. That's one thing, don't get that messed up about, you know, these all these schools or whatever. I can't speak for every school, but I speak for my school. We work hard, but we play hard. Like, they be having fun and I was like, like, I be like, dang, how people be able to go out like freaking every day and then still, they're making, they're doing so much better than, than me in their classes. Like, yeah, you work hard, you play hard. You just have to, ooh, sugar, my knees. You just have to, you work hard, you play hard. You just have to prioritize things and study smart and uh, really focus. You really focus and manage your time better because you can have that fun time if you, you're managing the rest of your study time better. But yeah, I will say like, it was lit, like there be parties and stuff like that, like uh, good times. Um, yeah, I, I will say one thing I could, I, one thing that I had to admit, I had fun in college. I had fun, even though I had the very low moments, I had fun in college, hands down. I had a good time, but you have to be proactive though. You have to be proactive in having fun. You have to be proactive in like, the turn finding like you know the turn ups depending on what you're into like if you're um you know there's something for everybody you just have to you have to try to get yourself involved in those communities 
um, and getting yourself involved in like groups, really the extracurriculars in order to like know what's going on and to, you know, you can make friends other ways, but it's also a great way to make friends. So I will say that that's dope. And then I will say that one of the huge things is like your network of people. When you're leaving the school, you have exposure to people who are, who are dope and who are gonna be like phenomenal in so many different fields. And that having that access to that network, network of people as well as alumni who are doing phenomenal things internationally, I think is invaluable. But again, if you don't get into like a, um, a top 10 university or you just decide that you don't wanna go, literally it's okay. There are people who did not go to top 10 universities that are making buku amounts of money so, and are in like phenomenal jobs and are happy. You don't have to, it's in here. If you're really to make it, it's, it's right here. It's the heart, it's your heart and your mind like just making it shake. Like if you're gonna, you're, if you're meant to make it, you'll make it regardless, regardless of what school you go to, it doesn't matter, it's you, it's the grit. Um, but I will say that it is very expensive, but financial aid definitely is super helpful. It's super, at least in my book. I'll speak for me, I wouldn't have been able to do it, quite frankly, because the tuition is wild. It's, it's pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty wild, and I will say in terms of like living off campus, the first two years, people live on campus, I know pretty much everybody, but then those last two years, some people live on campus, but I think it's like, I think I, when, when I was there, I think it's something where you have to apply for something or apply somewhere to see if you can. But majority of the people that I knew lived off campus. So having to find an apartment and do all that, that can be a little bit like a little nerve wracking and stuff. But I was able, always able to do it with uh, Facebook groups and live in like some pretty dope spots and for cheaper than living on campus. Way better than my places on campus and cheaper and a lot of Hopkins people were around too. So that was dope. Um, but overall, I will say that going to that school taught me so much about myself. You know, it taught me so much about who I am, who I'm not, um, you know, be, I, you know, going through different things. Like I can make videos on all these type of stuff if y'all want, want me to, but like, going through different types of, types of things and just making me like, making me stronger, making me not as naive, making me like open my eyes to things and making me just work harder and realize working smart, working, the need to work smarter, realizing um, how strong that God is even in my weakness. Uh, it's just, yeah, it just taught me so much. It taught, and it taught me the whole thing, what I can tell you about being at that school, they just, they really instill on you that you are great, that you are phenomenal, that you are meant for success. Like I will say that they, they, uh, they pump you up with like words of affirmation, like te telling you that you are the top of so-and-so amount of people, like, you know, because it is very hard to get in. Um, but like, they really encourage you and try to boost you with those type of words of affirmation so that it, it's, so that when you leave the school and you're like, okay, if I was able to do that, I can do anything. You know, you leave with that kind of mindset. And I can't speak for everybody, but I will say for me, just because I, I really went through it. I, <laughs> I really went through it, but God worked it out for me. God really worked it out for me. It's amazing how he works, y'all. But um, yeah, but if I, I'm like, if I was able to do go through that, whew, you know, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So they really put that mindset in you that, you know, you're, you can do it. Like you can do anything. You, you're meant to go hard. You're meant to, you know, so I really, I really like that. And somebody who had, he went to grad school at my school and he ended up being like working in one of our classes. And he was just saying how it's so different compared to the school he went to undergrad in, how they spoke to them versus the way that they speak to us, you know, in our classroom as if like we're greatness. Like they already are just like boosting us. You feel me? And I feel like that's good. That's good. Some people might think, oh, that's bad. Like that'll give people big heads. And maybe it does give certain people big heads, but for other people, it's kind of like words of affirmation. It helps you instill a mindset in you and your work ethic just has to f come after that, you know? So um, that's my mindset. Uh, would I recommend this school? Yes, I would, I would. I feel like I didn't appreciate it as, well, I appreciated the school for sure while I was there, but I appreciate it even more now that I've left and that I've had time to reflect on all the opportunities that I was around, like the network that I have, I had being there and I have now, um, but 
Ooh, excuse me. But yes, I would definitely, I would definitely re recommend this school. And I would say that it is a good school, but it, it, you know, there are some things, there are some things that are wrong with it. And um, if you guys want, I can make a video on that too. But um, yeah, I, it was, it was also like, it's in a location where if you just turn, like if you make a turn, like a couple, a couple turns and go down the street, it's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of poverty. So it's, it just goes to show about like gentrification. And then even Hopkins itself has an interesting relationship with the, you know, the Baltimore community as a whole, just because of the um, Henrietta Lacks thing. And I've heard of different issues also. It's a lot, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on. But overall, yes, it, it's, a, it's a good school. And if you think that, oh, if I go here, I won't be able to have fun, it's not true. Maybe it might not be as much fun as like another school. Like it might not give you the culture of like another type of school, but I would say it was enough fun for me. <laughs> I'll speak for myself. I had enough fun there. Um, if I went somewhere else, I don't know how it would have gone. <laughs> I would have had, probably had too much fun. You feel me? But um, it was enough fun for me. And yeah, uh, that's my little spiel. Uh, and I guess leave your thoughts down below, comments, anything like that. Make sure to like this video and I will talk to you guys next time.